out of place or suspicious, find an officer, security guard, or just call 911. For more information about security and what you can bring into the stadium, go to police.cityofomaha.org. Outside of Charles Schwab Field, Jill Lampkins, 3 News Now. If you're going to the stadium, make sure to empty your water bottles and bring a clear bag if a bag's needed. Other details, including a list of prohibited items, is available on OPD's website. Well, today, young players learned about the game as part of the second Chris Gradiville Gratitude Baseball Camp. Instructors ranged from college and high school coaches to former major league players. The camp at Creighton was founded in memory of former CU player and staffer Christopher Gradiville. Two years ago, he was shot to death at a rental home when he went to do maintenance. One of the camp instructors is a former teammate. He would be, uh, he'd be very excited to see that all these kids are out here playing hard just like he did, having fun with the game he loved. All proceeds from the camp go to the Chris Gradiville Leadership Scholarship. Now, your weather alert first forecast. A live look outside on this late Thursday afternoon from our Omaha World Herald camera. A lot of sunshine out there on the ballpark in North Downtown. Things are looking good if you are enjoying the downtown activities already. Epley Airfield, though, a little bit warm. We're 88 degrees. The wind pretty light, so not really helping relieve that heat much. Just about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And the dew point temperature, which is a measure of humidity, continues to climb right now in the upper 50s, which isn't super muggy, but it's starting to get a little bit more noticeable at this point. Right now, Council Bluffs, you're a couple degrees cooler, 86, but we also have an 88 for Bennington and Blair, Millard, 87, tied with off at Air Force Base, Plattsmouth, 85, and also hot out there in Wahoo. You guys are sitting at 89 degrees. So, of course, a lot of baseball coming up over the next couple of days. First game tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Oro, Oro Roberts, I almost said Orville Redenbacher or something. <laughs> <laughs> Getting hungry. It's almost dinner time. <laughs> Oral Roberts and TCU. 87 degrees as that game gets underway. Mostly sunny, very likely dry throughout. Low 90s by the end of it. For game number two, though, a very, very small chance of rain. I think we'll keep it dry, but low 90s early on. And for Virginia and Florida, ending things around 80 degrees. But Saturday's games, much more likely to get hit by a shower storm at some point, if not a few times. Wake Forest, Stanford, start starting at 1 o'clock, 80 degrees, mid 80s if it stays dry, and then we cool off into the second game, LSU and Tennessee. But again, both those games, probably some scattered showers and storms for them to dodge. Like having precision there on the games, Mark. Thank you. Omaha police made an arrest for a shooting on the Keystone Trail last week. Police say 25 year old Javaris Henderson was arrested for first degree assault and use of a gun to commit a felony. One week ago, police responded to 88th and Boyd in the middle of the day after a woman in her 60s walking the trail was grazed by a bullet. Firefighters in Kansas City battling a huge five alarm fire today. Aerial video shows a warehouse engulfed in flames. More than 160 firefighters were called to the scene. At least seven firefighters were treated for heat exposure. Three had to be hospitalized. So far, no reports of other injuries, but nearby buildings were evacuated. The warehouse belongs to a company that deals with plastic pallets, lumber, and recycling. In Davenport, residents impacted by a partial apartment building collapse will get some financial relief soon. The Davenport City Council approved $600,000 in COVID relief funds for an aid package. But during public comment, residents demanded more action from the city. It's sad. It's, it's terrifying that you could go to the store and get groceries and come back to no home. Others expressed frustration for how officials handled warning signs. Attorneys for a woman who lost a leg in the collapse filed to have demolition pause so they could gather more evidence, but a judge denied that motion. Voter turnout in U.S. elections can be underwhelming, but civic advocates hope a new tool will help them track down low turnout communities and see why people aren't casting a ballot. Here's 3 News Now reporter Alex Whitney. They say you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Well, when it comes to elections, you can provide a voter with a ballot. But that doesn't mean they'll turn it in, and civic advocates think they might be close to narrowing down why. 
are hunched that it has as much, at least as much to do with uh, the community dynamics of connection and confidence in institution as it does with the personal responsibility of going to the ballot box. It takes a lot of number crunching and demographic analysis to tie together information like median income, racial makeup, and geographic location to voter turnout. But Civic Nebraska has made that job much easier with its new Trove tool. The tool uses information from the latest census to match demographics and voters, whether on a county zip code or census tract level, to give a much clearer picture of who is and isn't voting. And sometimes, all you need to do to see the difference is cross a street. I think a lot of people, including myself, are surprised to see that you know, we have some areas that are you know, over 60% voter turnout and others that are not even 30% voter turnout. So I think that's, uh, number one, it's something that's very surprising. One example that highlights this is in South Omaha. The portions of South Omaha on the Sarpy County side of the street range from 40 to 50 percent voter participation. Cross that street into Douglas County and that number drops down to 26 percent. Which might indicate you know, there's, there's a lot that we need to talk about um, as far as why that might be the case is that uh, what is, does it have to do something with connections or confidence in institutions? New voter requirements will make the info found in Trove even more valuable. Voters now need to have a photo ID to vote, and Trove will help track down if that requirement is keeping voters at home. I'm really hoping that the new voter ID requirement doesn't uh, negatively impact voter turnout too severely, um, but looking at other states and looking at the course of history, we know that's a possibility. So. Um, we will do everything we can to to educate and, and assist voters to get ready to meet those requirements next year. In Omaha, Alex Whitney, 3 News Now. You can use the Trove tool for free. Visit Civic.